Hey folks, welcome to the channel. In today's build, we're going to build a sword. Not just any sword, but the sword from the movie 300. This will be my take on the sword, so it won't be historically accurate, but we're going to have some fun. And this one, we're going to make out of Damascus. Please folks, remember to like and subscribe. It helps me a lot. Let's check out this build. Okay, I got this forged out into a long bar now. Now I'm gonna use this cool tool, this equal measurement. What do I want? Four, two, three, four. So it's pretty cool. You can just do this. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna lock this and then mark that on my bandsaw and we're good to go. Here we are cut and restacked for a total of 108 layers. I'm gonna leave it at that, uh, back in the kerosene and back in the forge. So I'm done with the initial forging with the press. Uh, I got a basic shape. Um, now let's go to the anvil and uh, hammer it out a little more. Okay, I'm done the forging on this blade. Uh, now I'm gonna draw it out uh, on top of the steel and uh, we'll start the grinding. Oh, 
I've done a bunch of the layouts. I'm just going to do the center line. Okay. I think I got my guidelines. We can uh, start to grind. Okay, I'm ready to put the fullers in this blade. I've decided to use a ball end mill and uh, do it on the mill. So here it is after initial grind. Um, I've taken a file, done the file work on this transition. Um, this is a much different, steeper angle than this part. So this had to be hand filed, as you saw. Uh, and I'll work on that transition um, with sandpaper as well. And you can see I got quite a bit left to take after the heat treat. I've also put the fullers in. Um, turned out pretty good. I gotta take some of these bumps out, but uh, I'll do that with sandpaper. The one issue I didn't take account for is I did want the um, the uh, fake edge here, the false edge, to come down. So I'm going to have to put it up a little bit higher than I wanted, um, just because I got that fuller there. Um, so it'll be close, but uh, I'll make it work. So folks, all of this and about four hours of time is what it took me to sand out the fullers on this. Um, because this thing is so large, um, I couldn't really clamp it well in the vise, so I was getting a lot of chatter, which meant a lot of little grooves that I had to sand out. And I wanted to do that before the heat treat, because it would have just taken twice as long after. So, uh, much better now, and um, I'm going to do a little bit more grinding just to take some meat out of this. And, uh, and then off to the quench.
I'm ready to mill the shoulders on uh, the sword here. I've got it locked up in the vise. I put a filing guide on here, um, butted up against the edge of the vise. And this way, I've locked this on. I've zeroed the, uh, the mill so I know what the cutter is going to be. I'm going to cut both sides. Okay, and then leaving this on lets me flip it over. I know it's exactly against the vise and I can mill the other side and it should be precise. So this way I get perfect shoulders on the uh, sword. So it took a while, but I cut the top and bottom guards out of this one inch piece of, um, of bar stock that I had. I just figured it would be easier than try to forge it and bend it. So I just cut them out and uh, now we're ready to grind them to shape. So I've done some initial work with the small wheel attachment, but uh, doing these separately it's really hard to get the same level, so I've put these um, together, flushed them up, uh, and I'm just going to do it by hand uh, to do the finishing. like we're close enough uh, and now I'm gonna go to the mill and just mill these two faces uh, to be the same um, probably these two as well I've got the guard ground to shape um, of what I want now I've just marked off I want a little taper here so I've marked off with calipers I'm just gonna grind down so we have a nice taper here. So let's do that. So we're going to finish this off on this um, 2x72 buffing belt. Um, I've never, never actually used it before, but uh, we're going to check it out.
All right, I'm ready to wire wrap this handle. You see I shaped it a little bit. I put a little um, black uh, leather die on it just in case you see a bit through it. I just wanted the back to be black. You can see I've drilled some holes for the starting of the wire and then there's little notches. Okay, and it's going to go in this contraption which I'm going to be able to turn and it only goes one way and here's the wire so first thing I'm going to do is twist this wire okay folks I'm ready to twist this wire uh, I've got it uh, tied into a drill here and way down there in the garage I've got it attached to another piece so here goes Well, I managed to get the wire all twisted. I've got it wrapped around a, a bucket over there just so it doesn't get kinked. I didn't realize it was going to want to have a tendency to unravel. I don't know why that surprised me. Um, I've got the handle set up in the jig. I'm going to put the first, um, set the wire in there, seat, seat it with a toothpick, and then we should be ready to go. No, no, no. So I'm putting contact cement around here for the wire to stick to. And then it should be a matter of just pushing it in place. Okay, time to etch my maker's mark. Uh, this time I'm actually gonna put it in the guard. Um, so I've got this hooked up to uh, a battery charger, um, which I'll plug in. Set at 10 amps, which is the medium setting on this one. I got a salt water solution. I've got the positive hook to the, um, uh, to the guard. Don't switch those because it doesn't work if you connect to the negative to the guard or to the, the piece. You got to get this pretty wet. Soaking it, especially since it's you want it touching the electrode. And then this is important. Dab off all of the excess so it's just damp. And then just dab it over and just keep going over it. So what I do is I take one of these marking pens and I just kind of feel the edge and you should feel a little, like a little ridge there. And if you do, then you're usually pretty good. It's deep enough. Um, other option is to just take the tape off one side and just peel it up. Just so that in case you have to put it back down, you'll get it in the same place. Yeah, that one came out really nice. Okay, I've got the, my maker's mark in the guard. I'm going to use some of this cold bluing solution because I want the fittings to be dark uh, and not shiny. So uh, I'm going to try this out. I've never used it before, so we'll see how it goes. 